Welcome back to Onyx Financial Track. This is Ultimate Academy's team. I uh, hope you're all doing well. So in this lecture, we're talking about the purchase management system transaction. We covered the first three screens, and right now we'll go through the fourth screen, which is freight details. In this screen, we can specify the shipping details. Uh, it includes three tabs, as we can see. The first tab is freight details. Click on add. The branch and document number are automatic. Enter the bill of lading number and the shipping date as well. As for freight method, that is either going to be uh, air, sea, or land, and you can specify which one. Last date to ship, select the vendor. And by the way, the last date to ship, you will enter that one manually. You will also need to enter the order number. And this is the purchase order, of course. You will also manually enter the policy type, freight number, and the reference number as well. Uh, as for freight expenses, company or vendor, that is who is basically paying for these expenses, whether it was the company or the vendor. So um, the other field, which is freight, all or individual, all means that all of the goods will be delivered at once, uh, like in one batch. As for individual means that it will come in several batches. In the table, we will enter the items that we're going to receive. And FYI, these items will come up automatically based on the order number. The second tab is uh, other data. Here we will add the delivery location, date, carrier company, and all that. And uh, these are all optional fields, by the way. It's for the user to add more information if they need to record anything uh, regarding uh, the shipping itself. The final tab is total quantity. And here we will uh, specify the actual quantities that we're receiving. In the detailed data, we can add the container number for each item. All right, so next screen is going to be purchase invoice. Here we're creating a local purchase invoice. You will click on add. And as you can see, we have six tabs here. We're already familiar with four. Additional fields, tax, import from Excel, and other charges. In other data, we can enter the beneficiary branch, driver number, I'm sorry, driver name, car number, contract number, batch number, and a related invoice number and address as well. So uh, we also have the variable connect with contract, and that one is in case this invoice is related to a contract with a vendor. You'll enter, of course, the contract number. And we have another variable under selling. If we activate it, then the system will consider all of the items in this invoice as underselling, which means that the system will not include them in the cost. Uh, like it will not actually include the cost of these items as part of the stock. However, we can monitor all the details. Moving on to master details, you will select the branch and the method of tax calculation. Payment type drop down menu includes five options cash, check, cash and check, credit, and transfer. In case we select cash, we will have two new fields to uh, determine the cash number and cash name. In cash number, we will head F9 and select the right safe, and the name will be automatic. In case, though, we select uh, check, then we will need to uh, select the bank that will issue this check, and we will determine the check number as well, um, and also the due date. All right, so after that, we will need to select the vendor and invoice type. If you would like to uh, link uh, this whole transaction to a cost center, then you have the drop down menu right here. You will select the one that you want. All right, as for the price type, we have two options price without tax or price including tax. If we select price without tax, then the system will separate the price from the taxes and add each cost separately on the relevant account. As for price including taxes, then the system will add the price as a whole on the stock. If we're retrieving this whole invoice from a purchase order, 
incoming stock order or sales invoice. We will select the right one from the drop down menu, then we will enter the document number in the field uh, right next to it on the right. If we will install from incoming stock order, the system will give the user the uh, the variable connect by incoming order. And if you activate it, then the system will basically link the number of the invoice with the number of the incoming order that we entered in the GRN. All right, so currency, after you select it, the system will give you the exchange rate and stock transfer price. And by price here, we mean the exchange rate for the inventory. We have an icon called expenses. When we click on it, the system populates a window, other expenses for invoice. So from this window, we can add expenses and the most important thing or uh, option in this window is distribute method. This one determines how we're distributing the expenses over the items. We have three ways to do that. Auto distribute, that means that the system will equally divide it all over the items. Uh, expenses amount, then the system will add a value for these expenses for every single item and that value will be determined by the user from this window as well. As for percentage from expenses, uh, the system will distribute the value of the expenses according to the item's quantity and we will clearly specify uh, that percentage in this window as well. In the table, we will uh, determine the items, warehouse, quantity, free quantity, and tax. All right, so we have a bunch of fields below the table, vendor invoice number, supplier invoice date, representative number, and this one we will select the representative from the drop-down menu. We also have description, reference number, and by the way, description and reference number can both be modified after you've saved the transaction. You will click on the modify icon right next to the field and it will allow data entry. The rest of the fields here are statistical. All right, so we can make a payment for this vendor directly from the payment voucher icon, which will bring up uh, this screen that we, we, we already covered actually in previous modules. All right. So if you would like to work on the printing for the barcodes, you will click on this icon which brings up items uh, barcode printing screen. All right, and if you would like to um, add a sales price for any item in this invoice, we will click on item pricing icon and that opens up the item pricing screen which we also covered before. If we want to review the daily journal for this transaction, we will click on the general ledger icon. And that's it. We're actually done with the screen. We'll move on to foreign purchase invoice. All right, so this one contains four tabs. We already know three, import from Excel, additional fields, and other data. The only difference is that in other data, we have a new field, which is the letter of credit number because this entire screen is basically just about foreign purchases. All right, so now let's talk about master details. And um, actually, this one is the exact same tab as the previous one as well, That um, except that we only have two different fields, which are access date, and that one is where we enter the delivery date, and the other field is bill of lading date. Next screen is foreign goods received. All right, so in this screen, we uh, basically differentiate between the goods that we've already received and the ones that we haven't. We'll tell you how. You will click on Add, select the branch, and then we will click on this arrow right here on um, in invoice number to view all the foreign purchases invoices and select the right one. And in GRN number, we will head F9 and select the right goods received note. Then we will select the vendor, the number of the letter of credit. Uh, we enter also the reference number, description, and invoice date. And in case we want to link them to a cost center, we will select the cost center by pressing on F9 in this field. We also have a variable, multi-incoming. If we activate this variable, then the total shipment will arrive over several batches. 
we enter the item and after we do that, the invoice quantity of each item and previous quantity received, both of them come up automatically. Now that's really important by the way. We also uh, enter the received quantity and the system shows us the difference or, or basically the quantity remaining. Then we enter the invoice free quantity, arrived quantity, and the free quantity received. The system also uh, will show you the remaining free quantity according to the data that you just entered. Then uh, the last thing is that we enter the warehouse number and also the container number. Alright, so thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe and we will see you again in the upcoming lecture.